good to meet you. My son Adam and my friend Luke. Adam, hi, Luke. Yeah, it's really great to meet you, buddy. Thank you. Gosh, what do you got all over your hands, man? <laughs> oh, I dyed my hair <laughs> earlier today. Oh, yeah. Gosh, it got on your palms, huh? <laughs> okay. Dr. Craig, would you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, briefly? if you're... Well, if, briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah briefly. Now, uh, do you want me to make this to Adam? Yes, please. Okay, so shoot. <laughs> um, in going over some of your debates with uh, Ray Bradley, you yes. seem to defend the traditional orthodox view of hell being uh, eternally yes. eternal torture. Yes. And I was wondering, what's a quick reason for, for that? Do you believe there's scriptural support for that? Yeah, I do. I, I, I think that the scriptural support is better than for annihilationism, if that's what you mean. That's what I'm getting at, yeah. Yeah, you know, like in Matthew, it talks about these will go away into eternal life, and these will go away into eternal Matthew 25, punishment. Matthew 25, yeah. yeah. And the word is the same, you know, referring to eternal. And then Paul talks in First Thessalonians about how they will suffer the punishment of eternal exclusion from the presence of the Lord and the glory of his might. And so it seems to me that what's motivating annihilationism is a very understandable abhorrence at the idea of eternal punishment rather than grammatical exegesis. And if you can answer that abhorrence objection some other way, then I don't think you need to, well, go against the plain right. sense of the, the text. W would you disagree then that uh, the eternal punishment could be interpreted as an eternal punishment? Uh, the punishment itself is eternal but not eternal Adam punishing. Too? Yes, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> not eternal punishing but eternal punishment as in the, the severity of it is eternal in nature? I, I understand that distinction and I, I think that that is reading in between the lines, uh, honestly. I, I think that's a, dis a distinction that the scripture doesn't make. Um, some of the views, uh, Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. Uh -huh. The gift, of God, the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. Christ Jesus, John 3.16 says... Yes. So yes. it seems that you only have eternal life through Christ, and without Him you perish. And the Greek word that he uses is apolumai, which means to com completely eradicate, to completely destroy. So it seems like without Christ you are completely destroyed. You have no life, but, yeah. without, but with Him you have life. I don't think that verb means to annihilate, you know, to turn into non-being. I mean, it, it means to kill, or... Yeah, and I don't see any problem with thinking about eternal death. We shouldn't think that the damned in hell have eternal eternal life because they exist forever. You know, life, uh, soe in the, in the scripture is a lot more than just bios, you know, biological right. life. Eternal life is relationship with God. And so the damned may exist forever, but they don't have eternal life. That That is a gift of God through faith in Christ. Especially existing isn't the same as, as eternal, eternal life. life. No, no, not in the scripture. Would sense. You, I think it's very clear. Would you, would you have any other verses that, that may, I might be able well, to Well, John, over? where Jesus high priest praises and this is eternal life that they will know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent okay. the idea of eternal life is relationship with God and the damned in hell don't have that so even though they have e eternal perpetuity or existence they don't enjoy eternal life in that rich spiritual sense that John 3.16 talks about, I don't think. Do you have any materials or sources that I may be able to... Hurt uh, no, I haven't written on that other than that Ray Bradley okay. debate. I haven't, haven't done anything I just thought it was interesting topic. So it's very interesting and, and important, too. Okay. I'm an atheist, well, but you're a genius.